Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. I am so excited to film this video for you today because we're talking about one of my favorite notes in perfumery and that is of course sandalwood. I have spent a long time working on this video. You name it, I've most likely tested it. So if you don't see a particular sandalwood scent featured in this video, it didn't make my favorites. If you have any questions, you wanna know my thoughts on any particular sandalwood fragrance, just let me know in the comments below. But these are my personal favorite sandalwood prominent fragrances. And we have a mix of masculine, feminine, unisex, all that good stuff. The first one that has been all over the internet lately is Amouage Guidance. And I tested this right when it first came out. I loved it. I bought a bottle right away. It's been in my collection for a while now. It's just been waiting to be featured. I don't think I have ever heard so many mixed opinions and reviews about a fragrance before. The fragrances I hear being compared to this one all over the place. Like they have nothing in common. And with every single comparison, I'm like, where are you getting that from? I'm well aware that our noses are unique and we experience different things. But with this scent in particular, it seems to be all over the place. So let me give you my take on it. The most prominent note that I pick up in Amouage Guidance is sandalwood. It's a sandalwood bomb to me, and it is a ridiculously creamy version of that note. It's a very well blended scent. In the opening, you're gonna get these pops of different notes showing up. It's gonna be like taking you in different directions. You're gonna be experiencing different nuances of the scent. The opening is where I experience the fruity stage the most. So we have a prominent note of osmanthus, which is a floral that smells very apricot like it's bright uplifting happy and then there is also a prominent pear and that comes across like a smooth blended puree i was nervous initially about the hazelnut note because as you know i'm not into nutty notes but it's very smooth and brief in this fragrance so i experienced that in the opening and it's like this smooth creamy hazelnut shavings almost and although i can't can tell that there are florals used in this fragrance, I can't identify them besides the osmanthus. They're very well blended and that isn't the focus of this fragrance. So like I said, the opening is definitely the most dynamic for me. Like I am hit with the fruit, the floral, the sandalwood, the vanilla, the hazelnut, and I get that for about 10 to 15 minutes and as it dries down, it really mellows out. All of the notes seem to just blend, mesh together to create more of a unified scent. I lose the hazelnut completely in the dry down and the pear and osmanthus really settle, tone down where the sandalwood and vanilla then really takes center stage. This smells silky, smooth, creamy, woody with the accents of the, a fruit puree and a vanilla that isn't very sweet. This is a strong fragrance. It's one of those scents where I walk up to it, I smell it, and I will have this smell just in my nose for like five, 10 minutes without even spraying it. This scent profile, in my opinion, best suits fall and spring because there's this coziness to it and warmth from the base notes, but then it's also just fun and uplifting and bright. I personally find this to be so smooth and likable, but the internet is all over the place with this one. So be sure to sample it first. You can get sample sprays on Twisted Lily as well as the full bottle. So if you're interested in this one, you want a discount code and you'd like to support me, which is always appreciated. I do have a discount code with them on a 10 for 10% off if you'd like to use it. I did purchase this myself, by the way. L let the record show. Next up, this is my favorite sandalwood of all time. It's me in a bottle. I really, heavily resonate with this scent and that is the seven virtues Santal Vini. This is such a fantastic fragrance and it blows my mind that it's available at this price point because to me this is a masterpiece like everything I could possibly look for in a sandalwood fragrance it is 
cool. I feel edgy, confident. The performance, the lasting power is there. This fills a room. Like I will walk into work and the moment I step through those doors, they're like, on is here. I walk into the house, same thing. Everybody knows it's me. It projects and it lasts all day long. Perfectly unisex fragrance. I am so unbelievably addicted to this scent. The sandalwood note in particular pulls me in two different directions. On the one hand, it has this dry, edgy, earthy quality. It has a reminiscence to Le Labo Centaur 33, but it's not nearly as aromatic, harsh, dry, or in your face. It has more of a feminine take on that DNA, although I would describe this scent overall as unisex. And I think the cashmere in helps to mellow out the wood, bring in this smooth quality. The vanilla is so addictive. It mellows out these earthy or spicy notes in the scent. There's coconut milk adding to the creaminess, bringing in this balmy, warm feeling. This is a scent that is going to work year round because you have those bright notes that work well in warm weather, but then also notes that are amazing in the cooler months. There's cardamom bringing in a fresh spiciness, alibinum, myrrh oil, making it a bit resinous. In my opinion, this is just the most perfect balance of these notes. It's not too much of anything, but with the sandalwood taking center stage. I feel at home when I smell this scent. This is by far the scent that smells the most me. Please do yourself a favor and give this a try. I will say though, if you are someone who loves your feminine fragrances, I don't think this is gonna be for you because this definitely has an edge to it, a cool factor. The wood and the spice brings in that character, but if you can appreciate that, this is where my heart lies. Next up, an incredibly underrated scent, in my opinion, Henry Rose Queens and Monsters. Another unisex scent. This lasts a long time and has moderate projection. This is also a sandalwood vanilla, but in comparison to Centaur Vanille, this has a fresh green burst in the scent coming from the pedigree, and it doesn't have spicy notes or resinous qualities, but this is also definitely a creamy sandalwood scent. The vanilla is a little bit quieter in this one compared to Centaur Vanille. It's also resting on a quiet bed of white florals just sitting in the background, jasmine and freesia. It's quite a fresh scent and has an airy quality and there's also a coconut musk in the base bringing in a creamy, clean, uplifting factor to the scent. This could also be a signature scent. It works beautifully year round. Another favorite of mine is BDK Gris Charnel and the color of the juice, the design of the bottle I think really fits the mood and vibe of this fragrance. This is a beautiful unisex scent. This is a dry sandalwood with an aromatic black tea note. There's fresh spiciness from the cardamom and I'm usually not a fan of tea or fig scents but it's just beautifully done in here. And the fig isn't too loud in here for me. It just adds a unique fruity touch without that being the main focus of the scent. It's a bit powdery from the iris. Uh, the vetiver also adds the dry woody quality of the scent. This smells very chic, put together, cool, a bit edgy. This is a big compliment getter for me. It has good lasting power, moderate projection. People can definitely smell this on me when I wear it. And I just think it's such a unique and fantastic balance and blend of all of these notes. To me, this smells like a black tea with some spice, a drop of fig, in a wooden mug on an overcast, cloudy day. And the counterpart to that fragrance, BDK Gris Charnel x -Straight. And this is going to be unisex leaning masculine. The performance is amazing with this one. I only need a couple sprays, projection is great, sillage, everyone will be smelling you when you wear this. I would say that the original Gris Charnel best suits like 
all year round, honestly, and this is better for fall, winter. This is darker, sexier, more for date nights or formal occasions. This is definitely gonna cut through the cold weather. And I really love the addition of a vanilla note in this blend, and that gets introduced in the dry down. So the longer this sits on your skin, the more that warms up and this sweet undertone comes through. But this is still very much so mainly woody and spicy at the forefront. Um, there also is an addition of a little bit of patchouli in the base, and the fig is more quiet in this blend. I don't think you need both Gris Charnel versions unless you're a diehard fan of the DNA. Um, they absolutely have their differences, but they're not wildly different to where you would need both. I do really find that vanilla note so addictive in the dry down and I, I just love this scent profile. So that is why I have both. But yeah, this one definitely has more of a robust, deep, dark presence about it where I feel like this you could literally reach for every day. For the ladies, this is a beautiful, just easy to wear, dumb reach fragrance and that is Juliet Has a Gun Sunny Side Up. This is by far my favorite from the brand. It's just, it's just so pretty. It is lovely to wear. And honestly, this is a scent that you could love even if you aren't into woody fragrances. It's so light, airy, whipped, creamy. There is a prominent iso -E super note in here, which really helps the fragrance last. It lasts, but it is going to sit very close to the skin. And some people are anosmic or nose blind to ISOE Super. So some of you, it's possible, may struggle to smell this one, but it does stick around, although the scent profile itself is very light and airy in nature, how it comes across. It's musky, super comforting, cocooning. Like this is a beautiful everyday scent for the spring and summer. There's a happy, uplifting vibe to this scent. There's a natural light touch of vanilla. There's coconut milk to make it creamy and that definitely brings in that sunny factor. This can be a signature scent for the warmer months. It's comforting, so if you're into like bedtime fragrances, this is a great option as well. You need something for work that's inoffensive and crowd-pleasing. There's a slight balmy resinous feel from the amorous, more of that powdery quality from the orris root, and then just a little hint of jasmine in the back. Very, very fresh. It is so clean and pretty. Like this definitely fits the clean girl aesthetic. And I get so many compliments with this one and people wanna know what I'm wearing. Another fragrance that I love and highly recommend is Parlemois de Parfum Milky Musk 39. The only reason I don't own a bottle is because it is very similar to Sunny Side Up. I just don't wanna be redundant, so that's why I haven't purchased a bottle, but I'm thinking after I run out of this one, I'll get a bottle of that. If you want something that's more unisex, I would go with Milky Musk since this one is more feminine, I would say. And if you struggle to smell this one, then I would give Milky Musk a try as well. Maybe you'd have better luck with that. In Milky Musk 39, there's only musk and sandalwood listed, but it smells so much more special than just that. It's fluffy, creamy, there's a wood chip quality to the scent, and it doesn't smell like milk. So if you're not into lactonic fragrances, don't let that steer you away. But the name works because it does definitely have that creamy, ever so slightly sweet tone to the fragrance. It's very cozy, inviting, comforting. It would make a great signature scent, and I'd say it's about 80% similar to Sunny Side Up. You are getting the coconut vanilla spin to the DNA in Sunny Side Up. So this, like I said, I think best suits spring and summer where Milky Musk is a scent that could work year round. If you are someone who enjoys a natural, clean, fresh smelling 
woody scent that again you can wear in the warmer months this is perfectly unisex i would recommend 593 bali from michael malool now when i first got this fragrance i was really disappointed by the performance it was very light i had to shower myself in it However, after letting it sit for some time, the performance has improved. So now I get about five hours from the scent and Siage is gonna be closer to the skin. Keep in mind, I am an oversprayer though, okay? I'm not spraying this baby twice and expecting it to do the most. The only time I'm spraying something only twice is when I'm wearing something like Oud for Greatness. This is a great scent, not only for the warmer weather, but for the gym. You just want something easy going every day, out of the shower, bedtime, it's quite versatile. Work, it's just an easy fragrance to put on. This is a very creamy, balmy sandalwood. There's a prominent Elemi resin note in here and that definitely adds a light, natural amount of sweetness to the scent. There's a powdery creaminess as well. I'm seeing the trend of a lot of Oris in these scents. Clean, musky, and the cardamom is very fresh. So if you're not really into spicy scents, it's very smooth in here. Same thing with the suede. This does not, this is not a suede that's going to lean leather. It feels free spirited, a bit bohemian. And then there are some quiet, light, fresh white florals in the background. And just a hint of a citrus note to bring in some added freshness. Next up, one of my favorite fragrances is Byredo G Water. And this is such a beautiful interpretation of a sandalwood scent. This is another scent that if you're not into woody fragrances, you could still end up loving this because it's just pretty. It's an easy reach scent. This would make the most stunning signature perfume. Like if you are known by the scent, Holy cow. This is the epitome of the chic, clean girl aesthetic. It's not a dry, intense wood. It is pretty, creamy, soft. And that's accompanied by a vanilla that isn't too loud. It's not sugary. All of the notes in this fragrance really complement each other and nothing feels like it's competing. It all just comes together in harmony. There's a fresh green quality, but it's not too green. It's like you're taking a deep breath in like a chilled pine forest. You're getting the juniper, you're getting the pine. It's lightly powdery from, shout out the orris root once again. And there's a definite freshness to this scent from the leaven, the bergamot. You put this on and it smells like you have your life together. Like you just had a shower. You used your luxurious bath products, body products, hair products, etc., and you're putting on this chic, crisp outfit. One of my most complimented scents ever. Like, I mean, how can you not? It's lovely. I get about four or five hours out of this one and Siage is within my bubble. I get a lot of compliments with this one, so people do be smelling it on me. But I do be over spraying. I always moisturize, hit my clothes. It's just a lovely experience with this one. And I'm gonna need this or something in this scent profile forever in my life. Next up is Commodity Book Expressive. And this version is definitely my favorite within the book line. I really love the eucalyptus note that's added in this version. It just brings a peaceful, fresh, tranquil, zen, almost spa-like experience to the scent a little bit. A slight cooling sensation, if you will. There's sandalwood in here, of course, but we also have an addition of rosewood and cypress, cedar. It's a very likable woody scent. This is not loud. It's its closest skin and I get about four hours out of it, but it does last longer than that in warmer weather. It's fresh, musky. There's also a bit of a bergamot and similar to some of the others, this also has a light, natural, balmy sweetness coming from the amorous. This smells like you are reading an old hardcover book on a mountainside alone. You're surrounded by trees and it's just a very peaceful day. You're out in nature. This does have a bit of a similarity to Lilabo Santal 33 in terms of how 
specifically the sandalwood note is done, but it's not too close at all. This is definitely a different spin to that DNA. It's much smoother. It's not as loud, harsh, aromatic. And the last one that I will mention is not a favorite of mine personally for me to wear because on me, this scent and other many other scents that are quite similar to this because people love to put out their interpretations of this one. Scents that are done like this one just unfortunately smell a bit sour for me, but I love to smell them on other people. They smell so good on other people, so that's why I'm mentioning it. It's just not for me personally, and that is Le Labo Centaur 33. And I know that this is loved by both men and women. To my nose personally, it smells masculine. It's just a very dry, intense blast of sandalwood. There's leather, there's cedar, papyrus, adding this like loud, earthy, dry green quality to the scent. Fresh spiciness from cardamom. There's a subtle powdery quality from the iris, the violet. This is one of my boyfriend's signature scents. I cannot even tell you what bottle he is on now. Like I've lost track. So although I don't like this for myself, I love smelling it on him. To me, it smells like a sexy rugged man um, in the woods on like an in, on a dry, hot day. The sun is just beaming down and warming up this wood. It's just very rugged, earthy, hip, cool, edgy. Performance is just insane insane with this one like he leaves a serious trail everywhere he goes he gets a lot of compliments with this one actually and there are a lot of scents that are similar to this we have Maison Louis Marie number four Bois de Valencourt I gave that scent to one of my co-workers and she loves it and it smells so good on her there's the new Armani Privé Santal Doncha Lake and Sky Santal Grey they're all falling underneath this umbrella with with tweaks to the profile. So if you are into this scent and you're wanting maybe a slight alternative or something cheaper, you could look into one of those. And I do think that all four of those scents are good. They just don't quite suit my personal taste. And in terms of strength and power, ranking from strongest to lightest, it would be Centaur 33, Bois de Balancourt, Santal Dansha, Santal Grey. They start to get gradually fresher, more airy, and lighter as you go down that list. And I know that I have a couple favorites that I mentioned that do have a bit of the Centaur 33 DNA in them, but the blend in those specific fragrances just worked and was perfect for me. And they do definitely have their own spin on them. So that wraps up my list. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!